leaf sap color. This is a really good way to test. I said for magnesium, um, we've got this thing which is uh, used for just getting the bricks reading, but it's basically a pair of vice grips, and you can, oh, it was a piece of, two pieces of metal welded onto them. Um, you can take a leaf off of any plant, stick it in here, squish it, and you can look at the sap that comes out of it, and you can see, based by the color of the sap and the, you know, viscosity or wateriness of the sap, uh, a lot. It tells you a lot about how healthy the plant is. So I've got written magnesium bar and potassium, I think, um, are associated with this. Mg, B, and K are associated with this, leaf sap color. You would like to see sap color that is so dark green that it looks black. You'd like to see sap consistency that is so mucilaginous that you can put a drop on your thumb and sort of pick it up, pull it up, mm -hmm. you know, a good inch with your finger. Um, a good viscous, dark sap generally correlates with a really vigorous, healthy plant, a high bricks reading. Um, again, if you don't see that attribute, you can experiment with magnesium and boron and potassium on different plants to see what functionally will help facilitate that shift. You should be able to see a response in one to two days without much problem at all. If you don't see a response, that's not what the plant needed. Um, as I said before, a 2% concentration. So if I'm going to you know, take some magnesium sulfate and solubilize it in water, I'll take a quarter cup of that concentrate into a gallon of water as my, that's my concentration I'll use to apply the spray with. That makes sense. And whenever I'm dealing with a soluble material, I like to put a, a, a carbon source in, so liquid humates, sugar, molasses, etc. How much did you say per? <clears throat> a quarter cup of the, of the concentrate per gallon of water. Thank you. It's about a 2% concentration. It's a little bit less than 2%, um, and it's pretty safe. You'll, you'll, you'll have a hard time burning things with that. Um, I always like to buff it with the sugar. <coughs> um, generally, when I'm applying foliar sprays, I just have to do it when the birds are singing. This is my sort of rule of thumb. Uh, you may know about this, that bird song uh, actually functionally helps to open stomata on plants. Um, interestingly, you can play audio recordings of bird song in the field in the middle of the day in the heat in the hot sun and the stomata will open and the plants will wilt faster so don't play bird song in the middle of the day bird song is played in this morning in the dawn and dusk by nature um, and that's a good time to do your uh, foliar spraying so your plants are more open and receptive and they can take in those things and um, you don't have the beating down sun so things are less likely to get um, you're less likely to burn the leaves if you apply foliar spray at that time of day. If you are spraying so heavily that you're causing water droplets to form and roll off the leaf, you're no longer foliar spraying, you're now drenching the soil. Right? The amount of spray on a leaf necessary for, I mean, you, you don't want to put so much spray on the leaf that it'll turn into water droplets and fall onto the ground. That's no longer a foliar spray, it's all washing off. It's just a very, very, very light mist. Think of it as a cloud or a mist.